How's it going guys? Today I'm going to be answering the question of are modern road bikes worth all the hype? And I mean the I guess the answer to that question is going to be all right I got my cool shirt on sorry about that just need it man it's, it's cold out here got a little bit cold out here but but modern road bikes you know there's lots of questions about modern road bikes and if they're even you know worth it now look at this um Cannondale Super 6 Evo here I built this thing up this thing looks like the Batmobile no, I can't say that people say about Lamborghinis and I'm like bro look at a Lamborghini look at the Batmobile they look nothing like but yeah this thing looks like you know kind of stealth fighter-esque really cool you can look at that and look at the specialized tarmac SLA and look at all these other but like they all look the same I mean the Trek Madone's pretty cool you know the the Gen 6 was cool because they were able to get that drop seat stay feature while still keeping what you call the drop seat stay esque thing because they moved it further up then the Gen 7 looks pretty sick because you got that hole in the middle but <sighs> I don't know, this modern road bike, it's integration, it's disc brakes. Um, people people seem to like it, people seem to uh, fangirl over it. And it's, it's neat, but there's something about it that makes me think, this design is gonna look like it's from 2020 whatever in like 10 years. You know, a lot of road bikes have timeless design and you know road bikes are like airplanes if those of you don't know with airplanes um the older the airplane is um the less expensive it gets and you just keep flying it no matter what year it's from as long as it's not rusted out and it works and it's the same thing with bicycles um you just keep riding them you just keep servicing them adding new parts but the problem is that if you have a design that looks really dated or it's made really cheap and it has a lot of proprietary parts it'll be like yeah, this is cool, but um, when's next year's model coming out? And I think that's the big caveat with this, and that's kind of why I'm looking with a little bit of skepticism, and the more modern road bikes that I see, and the more things get integrated, I see the frustration levels with what it takes to service. Some of them go, sometimes, not all the time, some of them have gotten better about leaving the little channels for the brake hoses, for example, and you have wireless shifting now. But, you know, that's a whole different topic of conversation if every single bike out there should have wireless shifting all the time or um, shifting with, uh, K, uh, like, uh, electrical wires instead of cables and routing those electrical wires, you know, with the previous generation DI2. But that that's kind of where things are going. Uh, wireless shifting, hydraulic disc brakes, integrated through everything. Um, you know, that's part of the reason you've seen some recalls with Specialized, for example, everybody's favorite industry leader. The brake hose on the Tarmac uh, S-Works SL7 uh, get cut because there's that piece of metal that was kind of going into it as people would ride the bike. So. It's just things like that that I think with the design of these bikes, whatever whatever it is, the industrial design or the engineering, um, whoever's working on it and in whatever way, it, these are all things that people need to keep in mind and just as a consumer you need to keep in mind how long do you want to keep this bike? How long is the part support going to go, go on? Do I need to buy up a ton of parts right now? Am I buying this bike just because it'll look cool on my for my YouTube audience or, or whatever it is? Now, I think the Domine that I had looked really sick, and you know, I think you guys probably thought it looked cool too, but I wanted that bike because I wanted it. Um, it wasn't necessarily because everybody thought it was the coolest thing. I mean, if I wanted to buy the quote unquote hottest bike, I would have bought a um, Madonna SL7 disc, but I, I didn't buy that. You know, I, I think about, you know, how long am I keeping X bike? What's going to happen? I bought the Domine SL7. Uh, knowing I was going to ride it for a little bit and do my thing and then I was going to sell it when the COVID market was hot so that was fine I had a lot of proprietary parts but it was cool I got to make some instructional uh, informative videos for you guys on how to service that front ISO speed um, but the Amanda SLR um, or the ALR that I had and I moved a lot of parts from the ALR over to the SLR I built up knowing that I want this to always be a bike that I can go back to. Everything is serviceable. It's not a bike I'm gonna be in and out of. It's just a bike I'm gonna keep. So it made sense to have all those things, no proprietary parts, 
or you have the seat mass of the truck. There are a million and one truck seat masts out there, so it's never going to be a problem getting one of those. But other than that, everything's pretty much um, consistent, and everything is something that you can still buy um, in some way. And I'll make a whole other video about those of you who are concerned about, you know, if I have my older bike, am I still going to have parts support? The short answer is yes, but I'll make another video later on explaining exactly why that is. But I want to hear everybody's thoughts in the comments on what do you think about modern road bikes and do you think modern road bikes are really worth it? And uh, I love you guys. Stay vegan.